friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello! My name is Laura and I make all kinds of videos on handmade things. Today I am going to show you how I made a simple syrup infused with wild rose hips and chamomile. We will get to all the supplies that I used in just a bit, but first I went to the forest and I collected a small basket, maybe four or five cups of ripe red wild rose hips. So rose hips are the fruit of the rose bush. You can find them on your garden varieties, but I liked foraging in the wild. So these are from a huge vining wild type of rose bush in my area. So you can see here the way I process the fruits before using them. I just cut the ends off. The seeds are big and fibrous on the inside, but we don't need to take them out for this, this recipe. Some, some recipes like for candying, rose hips, uh, you have to remove the seeds, but for this, we don't have to because we're just going to be boiling it. So, rose hips are super high in vitamin C. They start small and green, but as summer draws to a close, they turn yellow, orange, eventually red. Oh, right, look, a bug. <laughs> I thought it was a praying mantis of some kind. See its little claws? Anyway, um, so this is a good pause for me to let you know. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for coming and watching this video. I would like to also invite you to subscribe to the channel because uh, it's a fun time and we've got a great community here. So, also, if you're liking the video so far, uh, please click the like button. So, in a bowl, after you've cut all of your rose hips and gotten them ready, cover them with water, leave them in the fridge overnight. That's going to get all of the creepy crawlies to leave the fruit. The next day, I'm going to take my jars. I've got 250 mils and 500. I got some sugar. We're gonna need four cups of it. A measuring cup, also tongs, whisk, a slotted spoon and a wooden spoon, all useful tools in this project. I also needed two pots, a little one and a big one, towels for cleaning up the messes, and I used cheesecloth for straining as well as a strainer. And you're gonna need water for this one as well. So after rinsing the rose hips, uh, one last time just to make sure, I added them to the bigger pot and I covered them with water. After that, I'm gonna put them on the stove, set the heat to high, and I'm gonna bring them up to a boil on there. You don't need to measure the water. I know I did, but you just have to cover the rose hips in water. So set to high and bring it up to a boil. Then I set the oven to 200 degrees, um, which is where we're gonna sterilize the jars. So I began by taking the rings and the lids off of the jars, putting the rings and lids into one of the pots, covering it with water, high heat. This is gonna sterilize that part. Then I washed all of the jars. So you don't really have to wash them if they're brand new, you can just rinse them. Um, but I washed them out just in case there's any dust or anything. Then I placed them on a cookie sheet, these washed, rinsed jars and then I put them in that 200 degree oven and they are gonna sit in there until it's time to fill them up. So probably that'll be more than an hour and that'll be more than enough to sterilize them. The lids are also going to be sterilized way earlier than we need them, but I just keep them on the stove while I'm working. Tidy up my workspace. And then I cut some of the cheesecloth to fit my strainer uh, and that is not needed yet, but. I was just prepping ahead of time. This is what it was looking like after a few minutes of simmering on the stove. They're a little brighter in color, but they're still hard. So I turned down the heat on the lids because I realized it was gonna take a little longer and I put a timer on for 15 minutes and I topped it off with water when I needed to and stirred it around because I was <laughs> waiting for them to soften a little bit. And after those 15 minutes, the fruits weren't quite as soft as I wanted yet. So I added a cup of sugar to the mixture. I don't know if this is true, but it made me think it would soften them more. I feel like either salt or sugar, it softens stuff. 
So anyway, I added a cup in, mixed it in, and um, <laughs> added some more water. Then I decided I wanted to add chamomile to the syrup. So I took one big cup of dried chamomile flowers from my garden and added it to the pot, which was coming up to a boil. Then I mixed in the flowers really thoroughly. So it was this kind of, kind of gross looking sludge. And I added a little bit of extra water uh, because it was looking a little too stewish and I was going for more of a soup. And here you can see, not super attractive, but I have to tell you, the kitchen smelled so good. The, uh, the chamomile was just, it was intoxicating, it was amazing. So I put a timer on for five minutes and I stirred pretty continuously while it was simmering for those five minutes. Then I turned the heat down low. I added a pinch of salt, mixed it into the, uh, the sugar water rose hip chamomile mixture. And after five more minutes, I turned the heat off, swirled it all around, and then I poured it into my cheesecloth strainer. Delicious. It smells so good though. <laughs> it looks like tomatoes and basil, but it's like so sweet and floral. Okay, then I left it to drain for about 15 minutes just to get as much liquid out as I could. And then I decided that there was so much still left in the chamomile. The chamomile was like holding a lot of the water. So you can see I was pressing there and it was pushing out liquid. So I thought, let's just push it out of the cheesecloth. I know this can get some imperfections to like come through into your liquid, but I know I'm gonna be straining it one more time in this like process. So I figured I can push out as much liquid as I can. And if it gives a little bit of impurities, I'll try and remove them with the next time that I strain it through cheesecloth. Does that make sense? Anyway. So at this point, I uh, finished uh, getting the liquid out. It looks like a weird honey, a little bit green. It smells good though. So I added three more cups of sugar and then I whisked that in until it was fully dissolved. The three cups of sugar already kind of thickened it and lightened the color a little bit. Then I put that liquid back into the pot and I put it back on the stove. I rinsed the pot out first. Um, and then I, while stirring, I brought the mixture up to a boil. I set a timer for five minutes, and in that five minutes, I kept the heat up and the liquid moving. After the timer went off, I turned the heat down and I skimmed off the scum that formed around the outer edge of the pot. So my mom told me this is the impurities. I don't know if it's like dirt or bug remnants or I don't know, but it makes your stuff come out really clear. So I skimmed it off. Then I poured the mixture through the cheesecloth and strainer one more time, just to get any last thing. At this point, it's so clear. Alex said it's clear and it looks like sesame oil, sesame seed oil. And I agree. Look how pretty it is though. So after that, I took the jars out of the oven with tongs, they're very hot, um, 200 degrees. <laughs> and then I grabbed a funnel, which I forgot, you need a funnel. And I ladled some of the mixture into each of the jars. I just filled them up um, just to maybe a half an inch to the top, three quarters of an inch. And then I added the ring and the seal lid thing and I screwed that on just finger tight so it was snug, but I definitely could have pushed it farther if I wanted to, but not all the way tight. Does that make sense? Uh, and I did that for the other jar as well. Put those aside. And then I just kept doing that until I ran out of syrup, which was just two more jars. I, I made a total of, I think, four jars. <laughs> but these second jars were a little bit thicker. You can see it kind of has like a syrupy texture now. Ta-da! So pretty. 
So after that, I got the lids on these last two jars, and then I put the jars on a rack to cool. So it's at this point that we are waiting for the, the magical pop. So the seal, the, the flat lid, when it cools down, it'll create a vacuum and it makes this pop noise. And I'm gonna show you, I caught it on camera. Are you ready? Pay attention. There it is. So after that, um, I knew they were airtight, so I made some labels, wrote out the gear, what was in it, chamomile and rose hip simple syrup or cocktail syrup, and that's it. Thanks for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, the syrup turned out great, and it tastes awesome, so that's cool if you want to try making it. And uh, if you did manage to make it this far, <laughs> in the video comment a rose the the rose emoji i'll show you i'll i'll tag it as the top comment and tell me your rose hip recipes if you do anything with rose hips in the summer or in the fall what do you make i want to make more things there's so many rose bushes around here that it just i have to i have to know all the things i'm into the preserving stuff now and i want to try more things also, if you haven't yet and you're still here, subscribe! And if you liked the video, click that like button. Okay, so that's it for this week. I will see you in the live stream tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, and if not, I hope you have an awesome week. See you next time. Bye!